Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, Sacred Geography, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Tuesday, January 10th, around 8.30 p.m. Mountain Time, 2023. Another X flare, X1.0 solar flare from a new active region, 3186 turning around the limb. This one produced a coronal mass ejection. But the good thing is it's the good news is it's not headed towards Earth. The big story, thousands ordered to evacuate as flood risk grows. Thousands of residents were told to leave their homes as heavy rain caused flooding in parts of California. Keep calm. It's boom time and it's not over, kids. We're not done yet. Thunderstorms rumble through the Bay Area and more saturating rain is coming. Let's take a look at mass evacuations in Montecito while the storm pounds L.A. Absolutely amazing footage. Kayaking in the streets of L.A. And a terrible story coming out about a five-year-old boy who was swept away by floodwaters. They're submerged. They're submerged. And here an entire seaside community ordered to evacuate. Tens of thousands remain without power. Let's take a, let's check it out. And the big winner is California. Once again, 102,000 without power. Now this number is going to increase over the next eight days as 24 inches of snow water equivalent or rain is predicted for Northern California. That could e equal 20 feet of snow for some regions. And evacuations have been lifted. This is good news in Santa Barbara, but the cleanup is just beginning. As Mammoth Mountain has officially surpassed last season's snowfall, and we have a lot of winter to go, and they may double it within the next 10 days. As of January 9th, Mammoth Mountain has officially surpassed last season's snowfall. A storm dumped 32 to 44 inches of snow on that day, and we'll have to wait to see how much more stacks up tomorrow. That already happened. But some forecasts are predicting storm totals could eclipse 90 inches. And there's eight more days of snow coming. No one's bumming because another four, six, or eight feet of snow could fall on Mammoth. At the time of writing on the 9th, Mammoth saw 288 inches. Take a look at some of those pictures. Absolutely buried. And the first snow survey of 2023 in Nevada shows some of the highest snowpack ever. That's a boom to Nevada. Take a look at that. Almost 200% across the entire state here in Utah. 200 plus across almost all of Nevada. That is a, I've never seen Nevada that wet. And the entire West, over 100% almost everywhere. Holy macaroni. Here is heavy snow between Donner Pass and Soda Springs just four hours ago. And this snow is going to continue for hours. I-80 is closed, so no one is driving up there. And for good measure, doesn't look like good driving conditions now, does it? You can check out footage like this over at our Twitter page where we retweeted Michael Steinberg. And you get to see a bunch of other news that we're using for the daily update way before we do the update, like a hyperactive sunspot region kicking off an X flare that we covered at the opening. Severe weather is also possible Thursday in Alabama. Let's check out the forecast. More wet weather for Northern California. Strong storms possible the next couple of days. The endless stream of atmospheric river events will refocus on Wednesday across Northern California. Once again, heavy to excessive rain on already saturated ground may produce more flooding. Also, snow will remain in the forecast for the Northern California mountains and parts of the Sierra. Meanwhile, a strong to severe storms are possible the next couple of days in the South and the Mid-South. There is that heavy precipitation in the form of Sierra cement up in the mountains and that should taper off by Wednesday when another system hits Northern California. And the systems just keep coming for Northern California. Take a look at the West. Boom. By Sunday, January 15th, another major system will re-enter the picture over the weekend. And this could be even more devastating because of the already saturated ground. Take a look at the total accumulated precipitation in inches of rain 
and it is showing some areas above 20 inches by Wednesday. That's just a f eight days out. Holy macaroni. And let's take a look at some of the snow totals. No, we don't want that. We're going to take a look at some of the snow totals here and just move it through. Here is your Wednesday. That snow is going to be moving uh, into our region, in the Four Corners region. Good news, as almost four feet of snow will be falling from my voice right now to tomorrow at the same time. Four feet of snow for the Sierras, and it's just going to continue to pile up. Take a look at the snow. Here's another event coming in over the weekend. And it just, the West is just on all these models getting pummeled. A little bit of snow for the Northeast, which is good for the ski resorts, but nothing spectacular. The first Northeast snow is going to be coming through Thursday and Friday. And then this weekend, you should see some snow in the Southern Mountains, West Virginia, all the way down into Tennessee. And then another event for the Northeast that's way out on the models. So probably not high re reliability. Seismic update. Let's take a look. No quake. Doesn't seem to be any quakes of note. Uh, we had some larger activity up in Alaska at five magnitude. The most recent rumbler here in Indonesia. Uh, no other quakes of note worldwide. Good news. Worldwide volcano news update. No out of the ordinary volcanic activity for the day. Currency coming into the list here with a puff to 15,000. Sabankaya, Cotopaxi continuing its pattern of puffing to 20,000. We've got Semeru to 13, Shibalush to 13, and normal activity, 22,000 foot puff from Popo. Uh, volcanic ash advisory to 15 for Fuego. Nothing out of the ordinary. And here we are live over at Kilauea on Two Pineapples where Kilauea Caldera continues to fill with lava with some great footage here from Two Pineapples as the sun is about to set on the Big Island. Space weather news update. Flare party. Another note noteworthy flare just happened. A moderate M 5.6 followed by another. Wow, we've got some activity happening on the sun with this new sunspot turning in. So we're going to keep a close eye on the sun for you as that quite impulsive X flare that kicked off here, active region 3186, did send a CME our way. There is... That X 1.0 solar flare, and here is the associated CME. Let's take a look at a video of that solar flare. Boom! And you can see the plasma ejecting there. Some of it is falling back to the surface, but in this shot, you can see a huge amount was ejected away from the sun. How fun. And we have a few days until this becomes geo-effective. As we can see here, modeled on ISWA Signet Streamer, the CME that's coming, that X flare and the C associated CME shooting out, probably not affecting the earth at all, except for a radio blackout that occurred during the event. And that radio blackout is still in effect a little bit, but is waning now. But we do have some more X ray flux causing that global D layer absorption to be affected. So, very active on the sun. So, we'll keep a close eye. We could be getting a large X flare coming soon. So stay tuned for more updates. Now, restoration of the ozone layer is back on track, according to scientists. They say that because we cut certain gases, greenhouse gases from the atmosphere and other ozone-depleting chemicals, they are actually repairing the ozone. The only problem with is this is contrary to peer-reviewed science on the ozone. And the history of cosmic ray influence on the ozone layer is obvious. As cosmic rays increase, the ozone hole gets larger. As they decrease, the ozone hole fixes itself. So the ozone hole was huge in 2019 and 2020 at the peak of cosmic ray flux. And now cosmic rays have dropped off a cliff. And so in 2022, after this huge drop down, the ozone hole recovered. Had nothing to do with you, had nothing to do with them reducing any chemicals or any treaties. It's the sun. Now, some more stupid science. NASA's space mission to pinpoint sources of CO2 emissions on Earth. Hmm. How about the ocean, which provides 99.999% of all the CO2? Well, anyway, plants provide a little, but... Carbon dioxide is not a greenhouse gas that can affect temperature because it's only 0.04% of the atmosphere. And, and to claim that that 
amount of anything does anything is the most unscientific thing ever. And not only that, humans are not the primary source of CO2. There's natural carbon dioxide. Natural CO2 sources account for the majority of CO2, not you. So cutting carbon dioxide is the dumbest thing because what we're doing is we're cutting a fraction of a percent of the naturally of the total CO2, which is only 0.04% of the atmosphere. Yeah. Global warming much? I doubt it. Now the riddle has been solved. Why is the Roman concrete so darn durable? Well, they figured it out, folks. The Romans were geniuses. They were masters of engineering. They constructed vast networks of roads, aqueducts, ports, and massive buildings whose remains have survived for thousands of years. And the science is in. And here's the paper, hot mixing. Mechanistic insights into the durability of ancient Roman concrete. Not only did they have a special recipe where they added slick lime and other types of minerals, but they heated the slurry, which allowed for an amazing chemical composition, wherein if the concrete were to crack and then it were to rain, there could be a natural healing process that occurs due to the chemistry and the hot mixing. Absolutely spectacular. And it's been years. This has been a mystery for decades. And now it has been solved. The durability of ancient Roman concrete has been unlocked. Gas stoves may be banned in the U.S. amid health concerns and links to childhood asthma. <laughs> I'd like to see how they'll pull that one off. Because there are now millions of poor Americans that are living in mobile homes and RVs that rely on propane to cook their food and to heat their house. So this, well, this could be the tipping point towards civil war, in my opinion. Now here's a breakthrough science piece we're going to cover. Healthy eating patterns are associated with the reduced risk of dying early. Wow! I had no idea that if you eat healthy food that's not contaminated with pesticides or processed with things to give you heart disease or cancer, you'll actually live longer. Wow. Thank you, science. Thank you, science, for doing amazing work and pointing out some of the hard, tactile subjects that we were, well, struggling with. So the truth is, Grandma was right. You are what you eat, and you reap what you sow. Now, the other night, we put up a video on Magnetic Reversal News about a Minoan eclipse calculator, one of the first analog computers. Now, the interesting thing is that, here it is right there, that they've deciphered, deciphered this device very specifically, and it can calculate with up to 95% accuracy every single uh, solar and lunar eclipse that occurs, and it's still accurate today. And this was built 3,600 years ago. The interesting thing is it corresponds exactly to Stonehenge and the mechanisms that use to predict eclipses using Stonehenge. With the same amount of poles and dots on both devices, one life-size and one handheld, it's a wonder. How in the world did these people who were unrelated have the same technology 4,000, 5,000 years ago. And that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance and many people are unaware of the seven Ps. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Become a Patreon, support the work we do. We love you, be safe. And that's a boom. Mm -hmm.